Good morning. Welcome to worship. Whether you're here in person or watching online, we are so happy that you have chosen to spend part of your Sunday morning with us. Thank you to everyone who came out, drove through, and participated in the journey to Easter last night. We are so grateful to God for the love of God that surrounded us and for the Holy Spirit that filled us. It was a holy night for sure. Thank you to everyone who made it possible. I would like to congratulate Ms. Lori on becoming our full-time preschool director. Lori will continue to do her work with children's ministries in a combined position. We celebrate next Sunday here in the sanctuary and on our Facebook page with the Psalms at the Palms at 10 a.m. On Monday, Thursday, April 1st, there will be a service in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. remembering the Last Supper. On Good Friday night, April 2nd, at 7 p.m., there will be a virtual Stations of the Cross on the Elizabeth River District Facebook page. On Easter morning, April 4th, there will be a sunrise service in our cemetery at 6.30 a.m. With, sing with singing and Holy Communion. There will also be worship in our sanctuary at 10 a.m. and on our Facebook page at 10 a.m. Come and join us as we remember where we came from and where we are going. From the dust of God's creation we came, and to eternal life in God we go. May Jesus always be our guide. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. In Christianity, we understand faith as a lifelong journey. Our earliest disciples were called followers of the way. Not the destination or the summit, but the way. The way requires commitment, courage, creativity. You cannot follow the way alone. You must have a sojourner who speaks the language. An advisor who adapts in any situation. A partner who seeks the path when you are lost. Guide who goes with you every single step of the way. God of the journey, we step into worship as the disciples stepped into the boat. We take you with us just as you are. We know not what lies ahead, but we know if we travel with you, you will guide us and bring us peace. Amen. Now time for our children's message with Miss Lori. Everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that you're having a great week. So we've been talking a lot about where do you come from and where are you going? So I have to ask you a question. What do you bring with you when you're going somewhere? There's lots of things that we probably bring with us. Maybe if you guys are going to school, you bring your backpack or your lunch. Whenever I leave my house or go somewhere, I always make sure that I have my keys, my phone, and my wallet. And I will admit, sometimes I forget those things. But there's something else that we're supposed to bring with us that we should never forget. Do you know what, do you know who or what that is? That's right. It's Jesus. We should always bring Jesus along with us wherever we are going. In our scripture today, we hear about the disciples and how they take Jesus with him and they go on a boat across the water. And while they're on that boat, a big storm happens, and Jesus calms the storm. And this is a lot like our lives. When we take Jesus along, when we bring him with us, whatever with, through whatever we're doing, he can calm any storm we run into. He can help us through any problem that we have. 
We just have to bring him along with us and always use him as our God. And if you ever need a little extra help bringing Jesus along or following him as your God, you can always turn to God in prayer and just talk to him. So let's go ahead and turn to God in prayer now. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you so much for your son, Jesus, who guides our way. Help us to always bring him with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, guys. I would like to actually, I think I saw Logan come in. Um, Logan Westcott is our new director of Connectional Ministries, and he is walking up the aisle right now so y'all can meet him in person. He has been here for a whopping couple of weeks, one month, so welcome to Logan. Anything you want to say, Logan? Um, I am so happy to be with the Haygood community. It has been so welcoming, and one of the things Tammy said to me, and this might be me being redundant, um, when I first got here was that Haygood has the most potential of any church she has been in, and I fully agree. I've been in like big churches <laughs> and I just see so much light and life in this community and I'm so happy to be here. So thank you so much. Thank you, Logan. This is a time in our worship that we give back to God a portion of what he has shared with us. You can continue to give online through our website, drop into the bowl in the narthex, Send it through the mail or drop it by the church office. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the blessings you have shared with us. Please accept these gifts so that they may, may be used to help those in need in our community and through the many missions of Haggad United Methodist Church. We pray that you will guide us to continue the, to be the beacon of hope and love at this crossroad as we have been for nearly 190 years. We ask these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Whatever comes, whatever goes, there is one thing that I know, and you are faithful. 
never-ending river, flowing full of power, washing over me. Please join me in our Lenten prayer. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love. Morning scripture comes from Mark 4, 35 through 41. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even in the wind and the waves, obey him. The word of God for the people of God. God. Will you pray with me? Well, holy God, we are getting ever closer to you as we walk this Lenten journey. We thank you for the promise of spring. We thank you for your spirit among us. And we thank you for the journey to Easter last night and the way you embraced all that gathered. Thank you for being with us, even in the storms, even in the peaceful times, every step of our journey. Come and now open your word to us. In thy holy name we pray. Amen. It was a beautiful day. So the wild bunch decided that they were going to go out in the Chesapeake Bay and go fishing. They were in David's brother-in-law's boat. They stayed out until dark when they noticed a change in the air. The wind was picking up, as were the waves. They had quite a distance to travel back to the dock when a thunderstorm popped up or as David described it, a major squall. The boat was rocking and rolling so that the passengers were all being splashed by the waves, and then the heavens opened and they all got drenched. It was quite a bad storm, according to David. He was so scared that he put a life preserver on every limb, one on each arm and one on each leg. He promised his brother-in-law if he would just put the boat up on land anywhere, he would pay for the new boat. Well, the wild bunch made it safely back to the dock, sopping wet, but intact. 
And it's because of that trip, David never goes out of the sight of land on a boat unless it has a casino and five swimming pools and three dining rooms. <laughs> in other words, a cruise ship. Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. It seemed like a simple invitation at the time. The weather was fair. The boat was at hand. Many of them were fishermen. And it was only a lake after all. There's always land not too far away when you're on a lake. Let's cross over to the other side, Jesus said. He challenged his disciples to move, to make a change, to go into the unknown to go someplace new, to cross over to the other side, to go on a journey. We United Methodists believe that all of faith is a journey. We Christians are always on the move. From its beginning, our denomination was on the move from the church to the streets, from the church to the coal mines, from the church to the prisons. And then the denomination moved from England to the new land across the Atlantic Ocean. John Wesley sent preachers and lay people one after another out of the church and into the world to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to those who didn't know it yet. After all, the world is our parish. Our United Methodist theology is based on this understanding of faith being a journey. We begin our journey with God's prevenient grace that goes before us, before we even know who God is or know of God's love for us. This prevenient grace is celebrated in our ritual of infant baptism. Before we ever know God, God loves us, and God woos us to be in a holy relationship with God, and God claims us as God's very own. When we make the decision to move into this holy relationship with God, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we move into justifying grace, where God love, God's love cancels out our sin, and we become as those who have never sinned, just as if we had never sinned. As we grow in our faith walk with Jesus and open our lives to the Holy Spirit's work within us, we move into sanctifying grace, where we become more and more like Jesus because of the Holy Spirit's work within our lives. We become more like who Jesus created us to be, the image of God here on earth. Jesus called the disciples to go to the other side, to grow in discipleship, to become more faithful, to follow him so closely that the sand from his feet falls upon them. Or in this case, as the water from him splashes onto us. So why is Jesus calling us to go to the other side with him? What does God want you to learn about Christ in this holy season of Lent? How is God calling you to grow in your faith? Where is God calling you to go and minister to others? Who is God calling you to share the love of Christ with? Just as important, I ask you and the church leadership how is God calling us as a congregation to go to the other side, to move out of the church and into the world and into our community? Now, let me caution us. We might think we know, but unless we ask God to lead us, to show us Christ's ways, Unless we ask God to guide us and to take us there, we might miss the other side that Jesus is calling us to. You know, it isn't unusual for a storm to come out of nowhere out on the Chesapeake Bay. Likewise, it isn't unusual for a storm to come out of nowhere on the Sea of Galilee. The disciples could have pushed back. They could have said, but Jesus, what if a storm comes up? What if waves get rough and we get seasick? What if we don't make it back in time for dinner? What if? 
But they don't question Jesus. They just get into the boat with him and they head to the other side. After all, he did call them to come and follow him. And they said yes. Too often we overthink our faith and what Jesus is calling us to do. And sometimes we never make it to the other side where Jesus is leading us. We tend to stay in our comfort zone in our safe space so that there is nothing for us to fear. If the disciples knew what Jesus had in store for them, do you think they would have gotten into that boat with Jesus? Do you think they would have ever left the shoreline? After all, there was a bad storm brewing, a storm that almost overtook the boat with all of them in it. And on the other side... Well, there just happened to be a man possessed by a legion of demons who needed healing, who needed hope and love and resurrection. This man's healing depended on those disciples getting in the boat with Jesus and going to the other side to find him there. You see, Jesus healed this man, called out the legion of demons that abused this man's mind and body, and separated him from the rest of the community and from his family. This healed man that lived among the tombs asked to go with Jesus in the boat. But instead, Jesus didn't let him go to the other side. Jesus sent him home. He said, you go and tell others what the Lord has done for you. So this healed man proclaimed to the ten cities all that Jesus had done for him. And people were amazed. Lives were changed. All because of the testimony of this man set free from a legion of demons. All because the disciples got in the boat with Jesus and went to the other side. There is more good news in this story as well. The disciples got in the boat with Jesus and they took him just as he was. They took Jesus as as his word. They took him as their teacher. They took him as their savior. They took him as their travel guide. You see, they went with him to the other side because he called them to follow him and they did. And before they made it to the other side, a storm came up. The waves began to toss the boat and to blow them off course. The rain pelted on their skin. And where was Jesus? He was asleep at the wheel. He was asleep in the stern where the rudder was that steers the boat. Don't miss the significance of this. Jesus was their captain, their pilot, their savior. He was the one to steer the boat to lead them to the other side. But he was asleep at the rudder. He wasn't paying attention. They saw no way way out of this storm, and they cried out to Jesus, Teacher, don't you care that we are drowning? Notice that Jesus doesn't respond to the disciples. Instead, he responds to the wind and to the storm. Quiet, peace, be still. And then when the wind and the sea settle down, Jesus turns to the disciples and asks, Why are you afraid? Where is your faith? Fear and faith. Often they are on the opposite ends of the spectrum, but sometimes they travel together. Because when we are fearful, we know that we can only step out in faith. Throughout the scriptures, we find God's angels and Jesus himself telling us not to be afraid, for God is with us. You see, Jesus said, let us, not you, but let us go to the other side. It is never an individual journey when we follow Christ. Jesus says, let us go to the other side. He doesn't send us to the other side on our own. Jesus is with us. And when we think that Jesus is asleep at the rudder, well, all we have to do is to turn to him in prayer 
and to take a step out in faith. All we need to do is trust him to carry us through the storm, to show us the next step, and to give us an inward calm that only God can give in the midst of the storms of life that rage all around us. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? The disciples turn to one another and ask each other, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Who is this? Jesus, the light of the world, in him there is no darkness at all. Who is this? Jesus, the word made flesh. Who is this? Jesus, our Savior, who died on the cross so we might have life and have it abundantly and have it with great joy. Who is this? Jesus is God's love embodied. He is the one who came to save us and not condemn us. Who is this? Jesus is the one who can cast out demons, bring healing and new life to us and to our world and to those who think they aren't worthy. Who is this? Jesus is the pilot, the captain of our lifeboat. Jesus is the travel guide for our faith journey. And he invites us to get in the boat with him and go to the other side. Professor Caroline Lewis writes of this invitation, perhaps the act of faith is not trust that Jesus will steal the storm. Maybe the act of faith is taking Jesus' invitation to heart. The act of faith is just getting in the boat. The act of faith is believing that the other side is not only possible, but it is essential for us and for those for whom we will meet and who are waiting for us on the other side. All of faith is a journey. And we have life preservers on every limb because Jesus is with us. Because our Lord is not only the one who calls us to go to the other side, but our Lord and Savior always goes with us and shows us the way. Peace, be still. Do not be afraid of your future. Do not be afraid of what is to come. For Jesus is with us and will show us the way. For Jesus says, I am with you even to the end of the age, even to the ends of the earth, even in the storms of life that rage all around us, even when he calls us to go to the other side. Amen.
I invite you to join with me in this time of prayer. Let us pray together. O most holy and precious God, we lift up to you those who lost loved ones in the shooting this past week in Atlanta. We pray for your healing power, for your grace, and for a community of faithful people to surround them with love and hope and healing. We pray, O oh God, for the shooter. We pray for the healing from the demons within his own heart and mind and soul. We pray, O oh God, for your presence with us as we continue to seek to walk this journey with you. May we draw ever closer to you as we walk together. We pray, O oh God, for Jonathan Page and Kelly as they have a C-section, their little baby is to be born today, and we pray for Grandma Ruth Page in this exciting time. We pray for Dennis Honan and others that are in the hospital or that are struggling with cancer. We pray for your healing power and presence to be with them in their treatments. And we pray for hope as you continue to walk the journey with them. We pray for those who are lost in this pandemic alone and feeling the absence of family and friends, and we pray for your healing power and presence to be with them. We may, we as a community, reach out to them. We pray for the schools, especially Luxford Elementary School, especially Hay School, Hay Good Preschool, and pray for your presence with all the teachers and all the students in Bayside High School. Oh Lord, let them feel your presence with them, and I pray for your divine protection over them. We thank you for your graciousness to us during this pandemic, and we thank you that you have walked this journey with us, and that you continue to make a new way for us. As we prepare for Easter, O oh God, hear us as we pray. As we prepare for the truth of Holy Week, hear us as we pray, as we find ourselves at the foot of your cross, hear us as we pray. And now let us pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're getting ever closer to the cross. I pray that you feel its shadow over you, for that cross is a gift of love and grace. And there is hope, hope beyond this pandemic, hope beyond Lent, hope beyond the cross. Because Sunday's coming and there's an empty tomb. Arise and go from this place in God's grace, God's mercy, and God's peace. Go and be a sign and a beacon and a light of God's love and mercy serving this world as you go to the other side with Jesus as your guide. Go in the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Amen. <laughs> 